grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome to our special service this evening for Maunday Thursday as we continue our journey through Holy Week with the reflections of Reverend Corinne Child. I hope you are keeping well and safe this evening. Well, this is the time we remember the gathering of Jesus' closest friends to share a meal through the breaking of bread and sharing of wine. It is also where he emphasised through the act of washing his disciples' feet, the need for his followers to act as servants through helping others. We find ourselves at the moment in a different environment than we are used to. Rather than gathered in our churches, we are gathered in our homes. But let us not forget that first Maundy Thursday, it was not in the temple, it was simply friends in a room sharing hospitality and caring for each other. We too are doing the same, for we are simply sat in our rooms and sharing our reflections with those who are gathered, wherever they find themselves, to remember this night. And we too can serve others by helping our communities get through the current challenges. And remember, we are never truly alone, for God is with us, as are our Christian brothers and sisters, as we are all one family joined together. Let us now come before our ever-present God in penitence and faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness, according to the abundance of your compassion. Blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, 
This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now hear our Gospel reading and reflection from Reverend Corinne Child. Hello and thank you for having a listen to this fourth talk in the series on Christ, Crisis and Lessons for Life. And for this talk I'm going to be thinking about crisis and crowds. Think for a minute of all the different crowds that you're part of. Your family and friends, for instance. What are you like when you all get together? What about the people you work with or belong to clubs with? What's that crowd like? Do you sometimes seek out big crowds in stadiums or theatres or live events? Why do you feel a need to do that sort of thing? Human beings need crowds. That's why we go to church, or do social media, or have parties, or anything really that involves other people. Just at the moment there are lots of things missing in our lives, and one of those things is surely crowds. We can't dispense with crowds. And yet crowds can also turn. People can get lost in crowds. Crowds can be unpredictable, a bit scary if you're in the middle of one. The manager of Manchester City, Pep Guardiola, says that he thinks the footballers who play on the wing have an advantage, because from where they play, near the touchline, you can hear the supporters near you, and you have a view of what's happening on the pitch. The players in the centre of the pitch, however, have a harder time because they have noise on all sides and there is action going on everywhere and it gets so intense that you can lose where you are slightly. In the story of Jesus' trial and crucifixion, you simply can't ignore the effect that the crowd has. Now, it's a bit complex because Jesus was cheered into Jerusalem by a crowd singing Hosanna, those are the events that we remember on Palm Sunday. Contrast the passage that I'm going to read from now. This is from John chapter 19, verses 1 to 16. And feel free, of course, to pause, go and grab a Bible, and then come back with it. So here we go, John chapter 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realise I have power either to free you or to crucify you? 
Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. To borrow Pep Guardiola's idea, Pontius Pilate is clearly caught in the middle of the field. He is in and out of the palace, he speaks to Jesus, then to the crowd led by the chief priests, then he goes back into Jesus again, and he clearly doesn't know what to do with the crowd or how to respond. But here's an unsettling question for any of us. What would we have done? if we had been caught up in the crowd on that occasion? Would we have been won over by the arguments of the chief priests as they played their political games? Would we have shouted crucify along with everyone else? What we do know, looking back on the story, is that crowds do not tell you what is right, particularly in a crisis. Several years ago I did a 10k run in Norfolk. If you've ever run or cycled outdoors around here, you'll know that the wind can pick up a bit. In fact, on the other side of the North Sea, there's even a thing called the Dutch Headwind Cycling Championships. Part of the course on the run I was doing zigzagged its way through the town streets, which had this strange effect. One minute you were sort of flying along this way, feeling great, and then you went round a hairpin bend onto another street, and you could hardly put one foot in front of another. Now I think that's an illustration of what the various crowds in our lives can do. One minute they're helping us along, and the next minute they're making everything hard going. You see it often in politics, you see it often in the media, and you can see it clearly going on in the story of Holy Week. The crowd is a fickle wind. And the question that arises for us here is this. How do we make sure we can hear the voice of God and the voices of reason as well as the voice of the crowd? We come from a crowded world full of celebrities and influencers and opinion formers. It's worth us noticing that Jesus doesn't play to the crowd at all when he's with Pilate. He even refuses to speak at one point. And that's a really interesting thing about Jesus. This person who came to the world, cared for the whole world, and died for everyone in the world. This person is not interested in the mob or mob rule. And by the way, if the church that he founded ever shows signs of mob rule, it should set alarm bells ringing. Jesus mostly preferred a different way. He did his speaking carefully, often in small rooms, as he did at the Last Supper. He withdrew to quiet places to pray. He encouraged his followers to pray to their Heavenly Father secretly with the door closed. We can't dispense with crowds, but we do need to step aside from crowds to be with God. The early church also had this healthy scepticism of the herd. For instance, Paul, writing in Romans 12, chapter 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
In other words, we mustn't just go along with the crowd. Our search for goodness and truth needs to be our own. So far in this series, I've finished these talks with a prayer. But this time, I want to encourage you instead to find your own time to be with God and pray. There is a fine Monday Thursday tradition of praying and keeping watch with Jesus deep into the evening. So why not try to say your own prayers tonight at some point away from the crowds? That ought to be possible this year, surely. Thank you for listening. Let us now spend some time quietly as we reflect upon those words from Reverend Child. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and for ever. Amen. We now bring before God our prayers and intercessions. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you're invited to respond with, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray to you in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. As we think of Jesus' love for us, his humility as he washed the feet of the disciples, we pray that through this time of uncertainty and social distancing, that we as a church can reach out to be of service to those in need and bring a connection and comfort to our communities as humble servants to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Just as Jesus sh shared his last supper with his disciples, we pray for unity and peace throughout your world. We ask that the plentiful food in your creation is shared fairly for all. Loving Father, fill us with the bread of life so that your kingdom may come closer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night when Jesus knew what lay ahead, the suffering he was to endure, he still taught us to love, not to hate. He embraced Judas knowing he was a betrayer. May we all be able to share that same incredible love, to treat each other with kindness and tenderness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we are scared. We are anxious for our loved ones, and for ourselves. Let us feel just some of that strength Jesus showed that night when we face the pandemic that is around us. Thank you that you are with us, giving us courage, perseverance and patience. And be with those who are unwell, whether in mind, body or spirit. May your healing embrace bring them comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for those who have died, that they may rest in peace, brought by Jesus' acceptance of that cup that was laid before him. Be with those who are in mourning, and bring them comfort and hope that only your unending love can bring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, let us seek to serve you and serve one another in hope and gladness, filled with your love through your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Perhaps if you are with someone at this time, turn to them or offer up a heart on Facebook as we acknowledge with one another a sign of that peace offered to us by Jesus. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right to give you thanks. It is fitting to give you glory. Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel and taking the form of a servant washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of pra praise and thanks. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us with your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. We now come before God to ask to receive his Holy Spirit as we say together. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am unable to taste the bread of heaven and drink from the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptised and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us a memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. We are now entering a time for reflection. During this time, perhaps think about all those who have shared hospitality with you, all those who have supported you through your life and continue to do so. Let us also reflect upon those who are helping during this current time and give thanks for them and reflect on how we can help, whether it is through our work or through offering help to others, even if that help is phoning someone to see how they are.
when the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you were not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace.